curing gout. The treatment to cure gout is a journey that not everyone chooses to take, but you can. Or maybe you've tried it before, but it didn't go well. In this chapter, you'll learn about how to cure gout, common challenges along the way, and ways to get around these problems. To understand how to cure gout, it's helpful to remember the difference between gout the disease and gout attacks. Gout the disease happens when high levels of uric acid in your blood form uric acid crystals in or around your joints. When these crystals are in your joints, they can start a gout attack. Why is this important to know? Well, lowering the uric acid levels can cure gout the disease by getting rid of the crystals. Until all of the crystals are gone, they can still cause gout attacks even as you're trying to cure gout the disease. That's why the journey to curing gout may include gout attacks along the way. It's possible to just treat gout attacks without trying to get rid of gout the disease. If your attacks are rare, mild, or easily controlled with medications, this might be a good choice. Keep in mind that over time, the attacks usually get stronger and more frequent. Also, in some people, the attacks may even become chronic, which means they never go away or start causing damage to the joints. When it comes to curing gout, we have to address the central problem causing gout, high uric acid levels. So the treatment is going to be lower the uric acid level. You may have read or heard from your doctor that the goal is to get the uric acid in your blood below six milligrams per deciliter. That's because if you keep your uric acid level above six, your body will start making uric acid crystals. The higher the level of uric acid, the more likely you are to form these crystals. Your body stores these crystals in joints and other tissues and keeps making these crystals as long as the uric acid level stays high. Over time, lumps of crystals called tophi may form, like the ones seen on the foot here, and joint damage can happen. If you can lower the uric acid level and keep it below six, the crystals will start to dissolve. Over time, this leads to fewer and less painful gout attacks until there are no crystals left in the joints. At this point, there are no more gout attacks and gout is cured. What makes six milligrams per deciliter the magic number? When we zoom in, we see individual molecules of uric acid crowding and stacking into crystals. When uric acid level falls below six, the uric acid molecules have enough room to move around instead of stacking up. The crystals have room to dissolve now. If uric acid levels are kept low, all of the uric acid crystals will eventually dissolve. This can take many months of keeping your uric acid level less than six. Remember, it took decades for you to make the crystals, so it will take time to get rid of them. But when the crystals are all gone, gout is cured, and you won't have another attack. So what medication should you take if you're interested in getting and keeping the uric acid less than six? Allopurinol is the most common and effective medication used for curing gout the disease. Allopurinol turns down your body's ability to make uric acid by stopping it at the source. The main source of uric acid in your body comes from daily breakdown of your cells which is a normal, healthy process going on all the time. When the DNA in your cells is broken down, something called purines are made, which are then broken down into uric acid, which is released into your circulation. The medication allopurinol blocks a key step advance so that less uric acid gets made. Over time, this results in a lot lower level of uric acid in the blood, and later, fewer uric acid crystals in the body. With allopurinol helping to keep the uric acid level below 6, the stacks of uric acid molecules forming crystals have more space to unstack or dissolve. Once the crystals are gone, which can take many months, gout the disease is cured and there can be no more gout attacks. As long as allopurinol is helping to keep the uric acid level below 6, new crystals won't be able to form and you'll continue to live gout free. What happens if you stop the allopurinol? Your uric acid level will rise again. 
When it rises above 6 and stays there, uric acid crystals will start forming again, and gout is back. Having uric acid crystals sitting in the joints in some ways is like having a pile of dirty dishes to deal with. It takes a lot of effort to scrub the dishes until they're spotless, but once they get clean, it's pretty easy to keep them that way. Uric acid crystals in the joints also take a lot of effort to scrub out by lowering the uric acid and keeping it low with allopurinol. Once the crystals are gone, it's a lot easier keeping them that way. Just keep the uric acid level low by staying on the allopurinol. By the way, allopurinol isn't the only medication that lowers uric acid levels, but it's very effective and has few side effects, so it's the most common one prescribed. It's been used to treat gout since the 1960s. But if allopurinol doesn't work for you, other medications like febuxostat or probenicid can lower the uric acid too. So if allopurinol and similar medications get rid of gout so well, why are there still so many people living with gout? The key thing to know is that not everyone completes the journey of curing gout. Not because they're resistant to treatment, but because the journey is longer than a stroll in the park. Gout treatment is more like a backpacking trip that can take three to six months. Don't let the mountains scare you. It's not a difficult journey. Many people have done it, and once they get over the initial climb, people who have made the journey feel that the trip was definitely worth it. A lot of people wish they'd started sooner. The starting point of the journey is what we'll call the rocky land of uncontrolled gout. Gout attacks are frequent and painful. Some people might have large collections of uric acid crystals called tophi in their skin and joints, which can lead to permanent damage to joints and other tissues. On the other side of the mountain is the Valley of Gout-Free Life, where gout attacks are pretty much gone. The mountain in the middle is the commitment required to stick to allopurinol. Getting from point A to point B requires commitment because there will be a few challenges along the way. The first challenge is making the decision to start allopurinol and then remembering to take it every day. It's not easy to commit to anything every single day. It helps to focus on the goal and to set reminders like alarms or notes on the mirror so you can turn this commitment into an easy daily routine. An occasional missed dose is going to be okay, but if you go off your allopurinol for more than a week, your body will notice. In fact, going off and on allopurinol is one of the best ways to cause a gout attack because it will cause your uric acid level to go up and down rapidly. This can disturb those uric acid crystals, which can trigger an attack. So let's say you've decided to start allopurinol. Your uric acid will immediately start to go down. The crystals will start to dissolve, but this can take many months to finish depending on the number of crystals you start out with. Now, uric acid levels going down is a good thing to get the crystals to dissolve, but a changing uric acid level may disturb those crystals, which can set off an attack. This is another big challenge you'll face. You can think of this as the gout punching back as you're trying to fight it. But if the uric acid level is lowered slowly or with help from another anti-inflammatory medication, this can go a lot more smoothly. A third level of commitment is to check in with healthcare providers regularly for blood tests, treatment adjustment, and more. No one should make this journey alone, so think of your healthcare providers as your hiking guides on this journey. They'll provide information, motivation, direction, and testing to make sure everything is on track. You should talk more with your healthcare provider whether this journey is worth taking. Different people will have different perspectives, and not everyone wants to get started. If you've hardly been bothered at all by gout, it'll probably be difficult to get excited about this journey. But if gout is starting to affect the quality of your life, you might decide the journey is worth it. To put this journey into perspective, only about half of people with gout even start the journey. Half the people who start the journey turn around before completing it. People with gout lose commitment to the journey for many reasons, but one of the most common is the experience of having more gout attacks right after starting allopurinol. This happens because allopurinol decreases the uric acid level, 
which can disturb crystals as they dissolve, potentially triggering an attack. These attacks can challenge anyone's commitment to treatment. Ultimately, only about a quarter of people with gout finish the journey. Here's the good news. There are ways to prevent early treatment attacks from happening, or at least make them not as bad. You can think of these as shortcuts that can make the journey to gout-free life easier. There are three main shortcuts to help people with gout over the mountain. We'll call them the daily medication strategy, the pill and pocket strategy, the start low, go slow strategy. The daily medication strategy is to take an anti-inflammatory medication every day to prevent a gout attack from starting. These medications include colchicine, NSAIDs, which are anti-inflammatory drugs like ibuprofen or naproxen, and low-dose steroids like prednisone. These are the same medications that your doctor might use to treat a gout attack, but following the daily medication strategy, they are used instead to stop attacks before they start. Rather than take a pill every day to prevent an attack that might or might not happen anyway, some people prefer to simply be ready to treat a gout attack if it happens. This is called the pill in pocket strategy. For this strategy, your doctor will provide you with a supply of anti-inflammatory medications so that if you feel an attack starting, you can treat it right away to prevent it from getting big and to make it go away faster. By the way, we call this pill in pocket, but we don't actually recommend keeping pills in your pocket. A better place might be a home cabinet, office desk, or even car if it's not regularly parked out in the hot sun. The start low, go slow strategy is the third shortcut, and it doesn't involve any additional medication. Start low, go slow means starting the allopurinol treatment at a very low dose, then slowly increasing the dose over two to three months. Gout attacks happen when starting allopurinol because the uric acid level changes pretty quickly. The uric acid crystals in the joints react to this change, which can cause a gout attack. But if the uric acid is decreased over months instead of weeks, the crystals don't notice the change as much, which minimizes the chance of an attack. While the daily medication and start low, go slow strategies are good ways to lower the chances of a gout attack while starting allopurinol, these aren't guarantees. Gout attacks can happen at any time, so long as there are crystals in the joint. The long-term goal of being on allopurinol is to dissolve all of these uric acid crystals so that there can be no more gout attacks. Also, keep in mind that two or three of these shortcut strategies can be combined to make the gout treatment journey smoother. You should talk about this more with your healthcare provider before embarking on the journey. Let's review how curing gout works. To cure gout, we have to address the central problem causing gout, high uric acid levels. The medication allopurinol can lower the amount of uric acid your body makes, which reduces the uric acid level in your blood. This causes the uric acid crystals in the joints to dissolve. Without uric acid crystals, there are no more gout attacks and gout is cured. The journey to curing gout can be challenging for a number of reasons, including the fact that treatment with allopurinol early on can disturb uric acid crystals and cause gout attacks. Fortunately, there are different ways to make the journey to living gout-free a lot easier.